People love their miniatures, and the prospect of letting them all go for a touchscreen system can be a bitter pill to swallow. But what if I told you there was a way to have your cool touchscreen functionality and keep all of your miniatures as well? Well, if that interests you, then follow me and I'll show you how to do it. In my previous videos, I've shown you how to use Foundry VTT and miniatures together. The issue is, is that this method only allows for a number of miniatures before the whole system starts to break down. In order to add an unlimited amount of miniatures to your table, you're going to need to move away from Foundry into another mapping system called Arkenforge. Arkenforge is mostly used for people who want to build their own maps. However, over the years, they've expanded to include a number of other options, including touchscreen support. Now, there's a number of major differences between Foundry and Arkenforge. When it comes to touchscreen users, here are the key differences. Foundry is primarily built for players connecting from their own homes. For this reason, there's a lot of design choices that favor players having an all-in-one solution. Character sheets, notes, images, viewpoints, audio and video feeds. Arkenforge, on the other hand, is not meant for online play. It's meant for players to sit around a digital game board. For this reason, many of the useless options found in Foundry for at-the-table players are all gone, leaving behind only the options available that they need. Let me give you an example. As a general rule, all the players in Foundry need to have a character sheet and token. Without them, they're not really able to do much of anything, really. On the other hand, Arkenforge does not have any character sheets whatsoever. Players decide for themselves how they want to manage their own characters. Here are a list of the things that I would like to have access to as a game master at my table. Number one, digital maps or video maps. Number two, fog of war with digital walls to stop line of sight. Number three, lighting effects like weather, fire, or lamps, a musical system, sound effects, and magical effects. Arkenforge covers all of these buttons. Now, before I continue, I'm not going to be going into any detail about these extra features. This video is primarily going to focus in on miniatures and touchscreens inside of Arkenforge. If you want me to make an additional video on how to add these extra features, then let me know in the comments. Also, make sure that you are liking this video and subscribing to the channel as well. Your support means I'll be able to continue making videos like this in the future. Setup is going to be your very first step. In order to set up Arkenforge with a touchscreen, you're going to need to have a two computer setup. I have one main Game Master computer that I use, and I also use a small mini computer that I use to run my touchscreen. If you want to know more about the mini computer that I use, then go ahead and follow the link in the description below. Here is a quick diagram of my computer setup. The red lines are the HDMI cables, and the yellow is my USB connection to my touchscreen. I have my main Game Master computer with two HDMI cables coming out of it. The first HDMI signal is for my main monitor. The second signal goes to my TV game board. With my mini computer, I only use one HDMI cable that goes to my monitor. The yellow cable runs from my mini computer to the touchscreen sensor only, not the monitor. I know, this seems strange, but this is how you do it. With all the cables set up correctly, let's jump over to the software side of things and get that up and running as well. First, you're going to want to download and install your purchased copy of Arkenforge software on both your main computer and your mini computer. The software already has both Game Master controls and touchscreen support baked into it. I would highly recommend that you also download the Arkenforge Beta Touch Client V2, and there's a link inside of the description for that. Where the main software works well, there are some additional features that are inside the beta that are just, well, too good to pass up. With everything downloaded and installed, let's go to our main computer and click on Launch Arkenforge Toolkit. On the mini computer side, let's click on Launch Arkenforge Touch button. As long as you're on the same network as your mini computer and your main computer, it should show that they are connected, your master's toolkit and your touchscreen. As you create and change maps on your main computer side, nothing was going to change on your mini computer side. If this happens, don't panic. It's not supposed to change any maps. The only thing that this space is meant to do is to transfer the data from your touchscreen back to the main computer. This is the reason why we never connected an HDMI cable from your mini computer to your TV game board. Instead, you'll be creating a player screen from your main computer. With the Master's Toolkit open, you're going to go to Player Screen, 
Active Player Screen. You're going to select the screen that you want your player side to show up on. This is going to be your TV game board. For me, that's option number three. And then you're going to say what you want to display on this screen, either a player screen or a GM extension. You want to have the player screen. Select this and say next. At this point, set in the dimensions of the TV that you're using and then say activate. Now that I have my player screen activated, whatever I do to this side will transfer over onto my player screen as well. At this point, you have all of your software and your hardware all set up. Now, before we start showing you how to use miniatures with Arkenforge, let me share with you some common frustrations that many game masters run into. By watching this video, you showed that you're not just any kind of a game master. You want to create something unique and amazing for your players. Well, here's an issue you may not have thought about before. You know that moment when you drop a new monster onto your table and your player's eyes just light up? Not because they're excited, but because they've already memorized that creature's stat blocks, their AC, their resistances, and of course, the very best way to kill it. Before you've even rolled initiative, the surprise is just gone, and it's not just monsters. Many players have memorized half the player's manual and monster manual as well. Here's why I love Benio's Token Spells and Loot, who are the sponsor of today's video. They build unique homebrew creatures that your players have never seen before, complete with rich custom art, rich lore, custom abilities, stat blocks, and that's not all. Each creature comes with tactical guides, story hooks, and flavorful prompts so that you can weave them into your story in a natural way, from the very first foreshadowing all the way to their eventual epic defeat. And it's not just monsters. Benios also creates rare one-of-a-kind items and spells your players will have to discover, not just select from a list. And as a game master, all these elements can easily be dropped into your game as treasure, rewards, and secrets to uncover, instantly spicing up any session. So if you want to bring back mystery, danger, and wide-eyed wonder into your games, don't just stop with miniatures and touchscreens. Check out Benio's Token Spells and Loot. Link is in the description. Believe me, your players won't know what hit them. So you've been following along and you've gotten your systems all set up. Let's go ahead and break into that software and show you around a little bit. Now, like I said before, there are ways to create your very own maps using Arkenforge, but for now, let's go ahead and just grab a map that I already own, and let's get started from there. I'm going to download a map from Benios Battle Maps. Now, because this is a 4K file size, it takes up a large space on the grid. Now, I could use it just like this and zoom in to these areas for some real custom views. However, I could also just resize the image to fit the grid that I'm looking for. Now that I have a map in place, let's go ahead and do some extra fun stuff. Let's go ahead and build a light. There's different types of lights to select. I'm going to select the campfire one. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to make a selection. I'm going to say I want it to match that color right there. Field of view. As you can see, as I am pulling this down, the radius of this light is starting to change. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to change the direction of this light. I'm going to put it right there. And sees through fog. And then I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on enable fog. So now you can see this light is really doing some great stuff. I'm going to change it again, reset my fog until I am happy with the light and its direction. Now that I'm done tinkering with my light, I'm going to disable the fog. And I'm going to create some barriers. So I'm come back to building again, go to barriers. I'm going to select a wall barrier. It's in this nice bright red color so I can see it kind of easily. And I'm going to create a barrier around this. Click, click, click. So I've created some barriers for my lights to interact with. And now I'm going to come back, enable my fog, grab my light, and 
as I grab my light and I move it around, you can see how it's going to interact with those barriers that I put in place. And there you go. I have some barriers in place. I have got some great light lighting effects that are going on. Now let's make sure that our touchscreen is all set up. Now, if you have your touchscreen connected along with your touch client as well, you'll see this button show up at the top left corner, MT Touch Client. If you click this and say more options, you can see that it's receiving information from your touchscreen. If your touchscreen and your monitor are not syncing up correctly, try flipping the X axis as well as the Y axis. As you can see, I have some tokens already on my screen. By clicking these buttons, I can easily align my tokens to my table. Vision radius squares means how much light my tokens are able to see around them in squares. If you want your tokens to be able to see more, you can increase this number. If you want them to see less, you can decrease it. Now that I have everything set up, some maps, lights, barriers, and my touchscreen, let's see what everything looks like all together on my touchscreen. Okay, here we are at the table and I have my player screen displayed from my main computer and the touchscreen data is being sent from my mini computer. I've attached some extra pads in the bottom of this miniature to help the touchscreen register the mini as one interaction instead of two. More to come on that in just a moment. Here's how to add a miniature to Arkenforge. Now watch closely. And done. How many miniatures can I add in this way? Well, the system says 100 of these interactions can be registered. This makes the amount of miniatures that you have all compatible with this touchscreen system. Is this a perfect system? No, it is definitely not. But it works great for someone running this type of a system. Here's the issue that you will run into. First, notice how the miniatures don't align perfectly under the minis. They're not off by much, but this is kind of annoying. Notice that the closer you are to the center of the screen, the less you're going to experience this type of an issue. Also notice that if your miniature does not have a stand, your touchscreen may see the miniature's legs as two different token interactions instead of one. This really isn't that big of a deal, but it is something to keep in mind. If you're looking at your touchscreen monitor, you're going to see that each one of your miniatures is going to show up here as a token with a number attached to it. On the Game Master screen, you'll be able to see the map and see the miniatures update the touchscreen in real time. So there you have it. Another option for adding miniatures to a touchscreen. If you want to add some additional options like moving tokens with miniatures, it can be done along with some additional features. However, these options are only available by using the beta version of the toolkit and the beta version of the Touch Client V2, which is available in the description below. I really love this setup with its simple approach to solving miniatures and touchscreens. There is one major drawback, however. Arkenforge is kind of a difficult program to use. A lot of the features, though powerful, are hidden in strange places that are not easy to find. The one major improvement that I would love to see is the ability to move from map to map in a more streamlined manner. I really like the way that Foundry has solved this issue with its easy to navigate layout, and I look forward to having this change seen in Arkenforge in any kind of future release. I also love the extra features in the beta, and I really wish they would make their way over to the main published toolkit soon. As frustrating as all these issues can be, there really is no other software that I've seen it's been able to solve the miniature and touchscreen problem as well as Arkenforge. Let me know in the comments below if this video has been helpful to you. Also, let me know what video you'd wanna see me make in the future. Until then, I wish you the very best of luck in all of your adventures, and I'll see you next time when we level up our crafting together.